Today, I'm flying Singapore Airlines for 24 hours in their first class suite. Starting in Australia, I'll fly 10,000 miles over to Europe. So long, in fact, we have to stop in Singapore on the way to change aircraft. The second leg gets even better. We'll be in one of the world's best first class bedrooms. Yes, you see correctly, I'll have an entire room to myself. Of course, this doesn't come cheap, retailing north of $10,000, but I'll take you along and show you exactly what it's like from eating lobster thermidor and guzzling vintage champagne to never before seen airport lounges and the very best bathroom you've ever seen on board a plane. With that, let's head to Sydney International Airport and pick up my mammoth journey on the ground at 7 a.m. Well, welcome back to the channel. It's bright and early here at Sydney Kingsford Smith Airport, but you wouldn't know it given how busy it is. We'll head straight to check-in F, and with it, Singapore's strangely deserted check-in desks. I can only assume most came three hours early, rather than my risky 90 minutes. After being promptly issued my boarding pass, it's time to head through security. This is absolutely rammed, but thankfully there's a separate first and business class queue jump, which certainly comes in handy this morning. It seems that our flight leaves from the rather distant gates 50 to 63, but this is also where Singapore's own Silver Chris Lounge is located. It's a rare treat for an airline to have its own lounge at an outstation, and there's even a first class section for us to check out this morning. The first lounge isn't huge, but it has a modest selection of help yourself drinks, and of course champagne. There is a small buffet selection too, but there's a la carte dining options available to order from your seat. Now, remember, it's breakfast, but the selection is pretty decent. I'd have gone for the Eggs Benny, but elect instead to enjoy a cappuccino and save my appetite for the onboard feast. If there's one thing I know for sure about this airline is you won't go hungry in the sky. Now, the lounge staff encourage those in first to stay and relax until the very last minute, but I want to take a look at our aircraft, so I decide to head down earlier. Our first of two flights today is this 14-year-old Boeing 777, delivered new to the airline in March 2008. Since then, it's thankfully been retrofitted with a brand new first class. Let's go and find out what it's like then. Walking on board, I'm warmly greeted by the cabin crew and shown to my seat 1 Alpha. There is just one row of first class seating in a 1 to 1 config. Let's settle into my suite then. Do note that there are no overhead bins, presumably to maintain the aesthetics of the cabin, but there's ample storage space in front of my seat for my luggage, thankfully. Initial impressions of the seat are, well, it's huge. You may actually recognise this from my flight back in January to New York. Back then, I had the entire cabin to myself, though in contrast, it's a full flight today. I'm offered a pre-departure drink, and I'm excited to see my favourite, Krug, is served on the ground. Often airlines hold back the most expensive booze until you're in the sky, to save on the tax levied by the departure country. As we push back from stand, I'm able to enjoy one of the most civilised ways of watching the pre-departure safety video. Champagne in hand, of course. Let's get my seatbelt on then, and after a further five or so minutes of taxiing, we've reached the runway, ready for takeoff. Our first flight will take just under nine hours, over 4,000 miles, reaching Singapore this afternoon, ready for our connection on the A380 to Europe. It's not long before we level out, so I'll get my seatbelt off and let the show begin. I'm initially offered a delicious glass of 2007 Comte, which retails at a punchy $210 a bottle. It's delicious, though my favourite still remains the Krug. Oh, and yes, get those bingo cards ready. My champagne is served with some warm nuts, and of course the extensive in-flight menu. Naturally, I'm starting to get peckish. Well, it's not quite as extensive as I'm used to on Singapore Airlines. I intentionally didn't pre-order using their Book the Cook service because I wanted to see what's on offer. That appears to have been a mistake. I'm also surprised not to see their signature chicken satay, a hallmark of Singapore Airlines first class. Whilst we wait for our food, let's take a look around the suite, which itself is most impressive. I'd say it's more of a 1.5x seat, as you could in theory have room for someone to sit next to you. There are multiple seat controls allowing you to lounge quite comfortably, but you'll need the crew's assistance to turn this down into a bed, which we'll do shortly. 
As for the rest of the seat, you'll get a large 30 inch HD TV controlled by your in seat handset, and of course, all can be enjoyed by the supplied BO headphones. There's a large cupboard too for all your desired in seat storage. Adjacent to this, there's an in seat power supply and HDMI port. A smart, roomy, and elegantly designed suite, and one of my favourites in the sky. Now, before we embark on this culinary adventure, and indeed before we continue on this incredible first class experience to Europe, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor, Babbel. Babbel is my number one language app. It uses award winning tech with lessons designed by real language teachers, scientifically proven to get you speaking in just three weeks. El saxophone. With summer slowly merging into autumn, now is the perfect time for change, to start learning something new. How about a new language to help prepare you for a future trip and immerse yourself in another culture? I use Babbel's short 10 minute interactive lessons daily to keep my language skills growing. What I love are there are multiple ways to learn, lessons, podcasts, games, videos and live classes with top teachers. You can learn on the go from anywhere. For example, I'm currently in Peru, somewhere I've dreamt of visiting for a long time. In this instance, I have some downtime to complete my daily lessons with a view out over Machu Picchu. Por ejemplo, hola amigos, estoy aquí en Machu Picchu. Of course, practice does make perfect, but it's come in great use throughout this trip in South America so far. Do give Babbel a try and receive 60% off your subscription. Use my link down below or scan the QR code to take you right to that discount. Let's get that tray table retracted then, as I make it lunchtime. This also means an obligatory top up on Comte as my table is set. I'm initially offered some bread, of course I'm going to go for the garlic variety. Let's see if this gives Emirates a run for its money. I can confirm it's fabulous. Anyway, it's now time for our next course of caviar. Singapore currently serves Kaluga Queen caviar, which is of Chinese origin, also served in Lufthansa's first class. I however discover something rather unfortunate though, the caviar I'm served is still frozen all the way through. Thankfully, the crew are fast to react, with what must have been a storage error. A fresh portion is provided swiftly. Of course, it's not an issue, these things happen. On with the show. My caviar is served with the usual suspects. Fresh soft blinis, creme fraiche, egg whites, and yolk, of course. Let's give this a try then. Absolutely delicious. If you're wondering what it tastes like, it's a smooth, creamy taste with a subtle nuttiness and a touch of salt. Sticking with the seafood theme, I've opted for the seared salmon and pickled kohlrabi with a wasabi puree. Quite the mouthful, hey? <laughs> Let's try it. Crikey, it's sensational. The delicate salmon contrasts wonderfully with the wasabi. It's no chicken satay, of course, but it's a good runner up. Now for the braised beef short rib with baby carrot and rosty potatoes. Let's dig in. As you'll know by now, I love a beef dish on board, and this is largely because it's a great test to find out how well an airline can prepare a dish in the sky, as it's easy to overcook. The conclusion, of course, is, well shown here, another stellar dish. After a short interval and momentary glance out over the outback, it's time for dessert. Now I've opted for the triple chocolate tart, complete with vanilla ice cream and raspberries. It's beautifully presented, but let's dig in and assess for, um, science. As I suspected, decadent and rich. Love it. Well, that was quite the overindulgence. I think it's time to change into something a little more comfortable. Let's boot the Tims off then and get on my provided Lalique slippers. I'll grab my PJs and head to the bathroom. There are two of which at the front of this first class cabin and as you can see are prepared for me to change in. I love this attention to detail. It's really refreshing to see, especially after recently flying BA first class. Enough said about that. I'll show you the amenity kit in just a second, but there's also a whole host of additional amenities provided for your use on board, as well, of course, as the signature Lalique Cosmetics. Right, let's fold back down the leather adorned changing table and see what we're working with today. So the aforementioned amenity kit, it's a substantial one. Inside is a room spray, body lotion, soap, and lip balm. As for the PJs, they're also Lalique branded. Soft, breathable cotton, and exceedingly comfortable. Right, let's get those teeth brushed and back over to my suite. We should be in for quite the surprise. Would you look at that? When I've been changing the crew, I've completely transformed my seat into a bed. I have a glass of my preferred sparkling water waiting for me along with two new friends who no doubt will be gifts for Millie and my nephew Charlie. 
Let's get into bed then and try it for size. Unlike some airlines, you get a proper duvet, which is a five-star hotel standard. The pillows, in my opinion, could be more substantial, but that's personal preference, of course. Overall, it's a fabulous place to be, and I figure it's rude not to indulge in a brief afternoon nap. I awake quite a bit later, all of the days when we're just about to make landfall over Indonesia. During my rest, the flight attendants have put out a fresh bottle of Evian, which is most appreciated. Now, don't hate on me, but there's a further meal service before landing as well. I'm served, well, let's brush over the pomp here, it's a toasted sandwich, and definitely one of the best I've had in the sky. Do they have a George Foreman hiding back there? Certainly some comfort food, but it's a great option, especially for those wanting a change up from all the fine dining options. As I contemplate ordering a new toasted sarni maker online, I'm told it's not long until we start a descent into Singapore. So with that, let's head to the lavatory to change. Much better, and crikey, I need to get some of this facial spray at home, an instant refresh, possibly a secret hangover cure too. Back at my suite, the cabin crew have returned my bed back into its former glory. Now let's get my Tims back on, along with my seatbelt in preparation for landing. As we glide over the rainforests of neighbouring Indonesia, I can't help think this is just the starter, as our next flight will be on Singapore's flagship A380, their coveted apartment in the sky. Ah, Singapore, how I've missed you. Shame I don't have time to check out the incredible Jewel, perhaps the most beautiful addition to any airport anywhere in the world. Finally, we taxi into Stand, and with it marks the end of my overall fantastic experience on SQ's Boeing 777. Now it's time for the next indulgence, the brand new and recently reimagined sanctuary, the private room, hidden away in the Singapore Airlines lounge. But first, I need to get my onward tickets. It's of course a sit-down affair, but in true Singaporean style, efficient and slick. Naturally, there's a totally private security wing to expedite my passage directly into the relevant departure terminal. A few minutes later. It's good to see Singapore Changi back to its usual bustling self, though where we're headed, it should be quite the opposite. Just a few paces down the departure hall, I met with the huge Silver Chris Lounge complex. Let's head straight up to this three lounge metropolis. This space opened just a few weeks ago after a $35 million revamp. It's certainly impressive on first glance, but we'll head straight past business class and into the first class lounge. This first class section though is largely for Star Alliance first class passengers and frequent flyer memberships. Instead, we'll be heading into the separate lounge, cornered off especially for suites passengers. To access, you must have this invitation, which I was ceremoniously presented with at check-in. I'm led into perhaps the most exclusive commercial lounge in the world. Highlights being the separate bedrooms for longer layovers, the separate private work areas, and of course, the restaurant. I think we'll be heading to the latter as I make it champagne o'clock. Now they used to serve Dom P in this lounge, but it appears they've secured a new contract with Tattinger. So in that case, it's more 2007 Comtes for me. Next up, I'm offered dinner service with this leather-bound menu. Now I could really go to town on this, but given I've booked the cook for the next flight, I don't want to ruin my appetite. Instead, I'll opt for the Wagyu satay. It may not be my favorite signature Singaporean chicken, but it will certainly work. With all this satay excitement, I think I'll grab a shower to freshen up before our next flight. Of course, the private room has its own shower facilities. Now that is much better. You really can't beat a shower and a fresh change of clothes on a layover. With my departure time looming ever closer, it's time to head over to the gate. To, uh, New York? Fear not, I've not completely lost the plot. This flight initially flies to Frankfurt and then onwards to New York. It's the only way SQ can fly the A380 to the States, as frankly, it doesn't have the range otherwise. Let's follow the signs to the upper deck, as this is where the suites are located, along with business class. Boarding the A380 and being met with a single aisle is quite unlike any other aviation experience. It's utterly huge. As I enter my room, yes, my room, I cannot help let a smile branch out across my face. Let's go and settle into my armchair, which frustratingly is positioned facing the wall, away from the rest of my suite. 
and promptly offered a glass of champagne, a punchy 2008 Dom. SQ now remains the only airline serving this vintage, as Emirates have now shifted to the 2012 in first, though at present you can nab P2 on select routes. Nevertheless, 2008 can be picked up for an eye-wateringly expensive $400 a bottle. We begin to push back from stand. I get my belt on whilst the safety video begins to run on the tiny screen in front of me. Sadly, due to regulation, I can't enjoy the wonderful 40-inch monitor behind me without craning my neck. Anyhow, with a short taxi, we're hurtling down the runway in no time, set to make up the remaining two-thirds of our journey over to Europe. In fact, this flight will take us roughly 13 hours, over some 6,500 miles, touching down in Frankfurt at 7am tomorrow morning. As we begin to level out, I'm offered yet more Dom, along with some warm nuts. It's also time to take a look at the menu though. Remember, I've pre-ordered my starter and main via Book the Cook, so these will not feature here. Of course, as we're airborne, I'm free to move my seat wherever the electric motor will take me. Naturally, this needs to be positioned so I can graze and sip champagne whilst watching TV. As noted, this is my second time on board this unique product, and it feels just as special this time around. With food on the way, let's take a look around my suite. There are just six of these laid out in a 1-1 configuration, which is class leading compared to what many perceive as the pinnacle Emirates' A380. Now their first class has a total of 14 suites, over double of SQ. Now we're currently in the day use setup, and I'll get the flight crew to set up my bed once dinner service is finished. The standalone bed folds out from the wall, and can even convert into a double bed if row 1 and 2 are booked together. I very nearly had an empty suite next to me, so would have been able to do this, but alas, a last minute booking put a stop to this. So I make it dinner time. My table is set, and I'm offered a selection of fresh breads. Given how good it was earlier, I really must have some more of the garlic bread. Sadly, this wasn't quite as good as earlier on, seemingly a little too crispy this evening. Right then, it's caviar round two. Well, you know the drill by now. Let's just hope this one isn't frozen through. I really like how SQ provide a brand new mother of pearl spoon for your caviar, even though this one took some time to unpack. Thankfully, this caviar is at perfect temperature, and along with the usual accompaniments, went down an absolute treat. So I'm interested, have you tried caviar before, or if not, would you, given the choice? For my starter, I finally got my favourite, via pre-order, or, well, book the cook, introducing the SQ Signature Chicken Satay. Excited is an understatement here, and it's a food that brings back the nostalgia of travelling to Singapore and Malaysia with my family in my teenage years. For my main, and as I referenced earlier, it's lobster thermidor time. Definitely not something I've ever had on board a plane before. Anyhow, how did this iconic dish translate at 40,000 feet? Surprisingly well, of course it's prepared and partly cooked on the ground, but I still find it mighty impressive that this has been whipped up and presented like this in the sky. With that, I think I've hit the pinnacle of in-flight dining. Let's tuck that tray table neatly away and head to the bathroom to get ready for bed. Now there are two bathrooms at the front of the suite's cabin, with one larger than the other, and we'll focus initially on the larger lav. It's more dressing room come bathroom than anything you've ever seen on a plane before. I think it's finally time to get the comfy Lalique PJs on. It's been a long day after all. Much better. In addition, I've received yet another, different amenity kit. This one features a moisturiser, facial mist, lip balm, and some perfume. After a quick facial mist spray, let's get my teeth brushed and head back to my suite. In my absence, the flight crew have been making up my bed in preparation for sleep. A few minutes later. Just look at that. I think this might be the only product currently flying with a totally separate bed. And this makes all the difference when compared to the folding seat of the competition. I'll stow my clothes in my wardrobe and get my suite door shut for maximum privacy. Let's not forget to shut the window blinds as I really don't want to get woken up at the crack of dawn somewhere over the Middle East. So is the bed as good as I remember? The answer is reassuringly yes, for once an airplane bed which doesn't double as a seat. Anyway, night all, I'll catch you all in the morning. The next day.
Well, hello. What a lovely night's sleep that was. I can only assume it was the multiple time zones and overindulgent eating, but I slept incredibly well. Perhaps the best I've ever slept on board an aircraft. That said, I am in need of a caffeine hit to push me into European time. As I take the first few sips of this expertly made fresh cappuccino, let's reposition my armchair to the dining mode. Breakfast is still a fine affair with quite the variety of food on offer, and I've gone for something a tad out of my comfort zone, a far cry from the pancakes, that's for sure. As my table is set, I'm offered a selection of fresh pastries, fresh, buttery and flaky. For my starter, I'm presented with a fresh fruit platter. Oddly, the mango is still wrapped in plastic. Not quite sure why, but it all still tastes fresh and delicious. Quite a feat at 40,000 feet. Ah, my surprise dish. Introducing my beef rendang, which is a popular Singaporean dish, but a far cry from my usual Western brekkie. It is phenomenal, though very spicy. As the sun continues to rise over the horizon, I'm told it's not long till we're going to begin our descent into Frankfurt. So with that, I'll grab my clothes from my in-suite closet and head this time to the other lavatory. This is the smaller of the two, not as spacious or Instagrammable, but still clean, fresh and better than 99% of other in-flight bathrooms. Heading back to my suite, I think it's time we talk cost, as I'm sure you'll be interested how exactly I booked this. Well, let's be straight, it wasn't cheap. Yes, I didn't pay the quoted $10,500 retail, but this still cost a lot. I booked via the American Express airline program, which gives discount on some airline tickets at a cost of $5,250. Once upon a time, you may have been able to book this via points, but to line up availability from Australia to Europe on both of the aircraft I wanted for this, next to impossible. My recommendation though, is if you want to try the A380 Suites experience, is to redeem on the next sector of this flight from Frankfurt to New York, where there's sporadic availability at 86,000 Chris Flyer miles. With that, we start to make our final approach into Germany, and with it bringing our 24 hours in the sky to a close. Aside from being one of the more ambitious videos to film, it's been one of the most comfortable, and I don't feel jet lagged thanks to sleeping like a baby for over half of this flight. Thanks again for joining me on this adventure, and as always, do let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'll catch you all again next time.